What's up, people lovers, and welcome to the second episode of uh, whatever the name is going to be, Over Explain or Nili Teaches or whatever. And we have Marine Lord against Wham, and we will take a look at the French. And I already want to start off explaining one mechanic, which is the Stealth Forest. So basically, you can see less area in Stealth Forest. As you can see, this is no Stealth Forest. You see a lot, and then you go into Stealth Forest again. And scouts are actually incredibly good at looking into Stealth Forest. And other units really struggle. They have a line of sight of zero or something. So technically a spearman could stand next to an archer and neither attack each other. So that's why in Stealth Forest you either want to have lots of outposts or you want to have some scouts with your army. Let's go into the civilizations. We have French. A very generic civilization here by our French player Marine Lord. It is comparable to the English that we had. English, as you saw in game number one, pretty good with longbowmen. In this case, French really good with their horses. We can, as you know, advance to the next age by using 400 food and 200 gold to build a landmark. Right now, considered to be the strong landmark on all land maps is the School of Cavalry. Basically a stable that works 20% faster and you can build horsemen out of that one. Horsemen, a typical scouting unit. But also, bonus for the French is that they can build early knights. Knights, normally a castle unit, but French and Rus can build them in feudal age. Another civilization that is pretty crazy and suffered a bit with their win rate is now pretty high. is Delhi. Their specialty is that they don't have to pay any prices for upgrades, but they research way slower. So this is an upgrade, basically increases your wood line like 1% to 2%. All the other upgrades, obviously way more efficient, as you can see, 15% here, but takes some time. To reduce that time, we can build a mosque. And if you put scholars, kind of a monk unit, into that mosque, your research time will be decreased. Something that's pretty crazy is a, called, a technology called Sanctity that allows you, allows you to capture sacred sites, which are those beautiful things. If you control a sacred site and put a monk there and wait for a period of time, you get 100 gold per minute. After researching Sanctity here, you actually get 200 gold per minute. There are three sacred sites on a lot of maps. Some have two, some have one. If you control all the sacred sites and hold them for 10 minutes, you actually win the game. So, Delhi, more gold income after researching an upgrade, plus the potential to win the game. Often we see them to go for lots of scholars and control that area. Dome of Faith, one of the landmarks that Delhi can go for, 50% reduction cost for those scholars. So now you only have to pay 75 gold, I believe, and... Therefore, we have seen people go for those quite a bit, quite a bit, and try to control those sacred sites. Also, put them into the mosque for faster research. As you can see, we are going for wheelbarrow, the dark edge upgrade, then faster hunt. This is an upgrade that allows you to carry, I think, sheep and deer, deer 100%, yeah, sheep and deer can be carried by a scout and obviously faster farming, all upgrades that we will see later on. Barracks, a dark edge building, we can go for spearmen here, as you can see, and then we could also go for the upgrade to the feudal age spearmen called hardened spearmen, an upgrade that might be queued in after two spearmen are out on the field. And now we see sanctity, as you can see here, you can cancel an upgrade and the progress will be saved to get that one later we always go for the scholars 75 gold and we also go for sheep which is a bit surprising because as you know delhi and abyssid faster with their berries then we have the school of cavalry kind of what we wanted to see and marine lord he's actually going to address something that we already said earlier that delhi is often playing for those sacred sites Scouts trying to look into something. Spearmen are scaring those away though. And Marine Lord, a guy that is really known for playing professional scouts. 
the upgrade that allows you to shoot some deer and then carry those deer carcasses next to your town center. Remember, not really decaying at all. Also, sneaky villager here around the corner and marine lord is trying to contest the sacred site here at the left hand side wants to build a tower and doesn't want to give the opponent a free control over that sacred site normally you can only get those in castle age but with this upgrade you can get it in feudal age as well every other civilization basically only has access to monks imams scholars or something in that ballpark from Castle Edge on. And now we can see Marine Lord shot some of the deer, brings them home to the town center. Deer income faster than sheep, faster than berries. Boar, the fastest um, income, 2000 food even, but really, really strong. If you go for like five villagers for that huntable boar, don't micro, you lose all five villagers. So you really need to micro there, might even take some army and try to get the kill that way. Now, we have the option to go for some more military, but obviously we had the scouting of the spearmen from Wham, so Marine Lord decided to go for the archer range. He's now housed. A big difference also, Age of Empires 4 to Age of Empires 2. You basically build the archer to 99% till the house finishes, and then you can pop it. So it doesn't basically block the whole thing. Blacksmith. Also, remember, all upgrades for free. So we often see Delhi players going for Blacksmith relatively early and trying to get all those four upgrades, making them stronger. Another upgrade called Siege Engineers. You can research that one and then can build ramps in Feudal Age, trying to pressure the opponent, especially punishing against people that are going for Castle Age. Now we see a specialty of the Delhi Sacred Side Control here. And they can actually wall with their infantry. Pretty strong. Gives you a lot of control and that's why we see Marine Lord already towering up there. Try to prevent that. Also is now getting arrow slits so he doesn't have to have villagers around there. Loses that villager in the back though. So nice awareness there by Wham. And yeah, if you simply get a scholar in here, that's a nice, nice control for Wham. More scouts around. Trying to get some more deer. So Marine Lord in this relatively passive game is um, mainly going for army. Now going for some of his Royal Knights. A crazy strong unit. Royal Knights have a base damage of 29. But their first attack is called a charge. And they actually do even more damage there. Spearman has a mechanic called Brace. Where they basically stand still. Hold their lands into the direction of the army. And if they get close enough. They will get stunned for a small moment. And yeah. So some counter system there. Knights will get a nice pick off against the Scholar there. And as you can see, damage output pretty strong at the start. But then will take some time. Also, <laughs> Wolves following a scout? I thought that was... That's a bit surprising to me. thought there you needed to intentionally attack that. Now this one is cancelled. Big, big difference. In Age of Empires 4, if a building got did not get attacked, you get 100% refund no matter how m much HP... Uh, you had before and how how many percentage you built that one before so if it got attacked you lose some but if, if it was like f50 percent and you built the whole 50 percent you actually get 100 percent back so I, I still made a list of stuff that i wanted to mention as well what do we have age advancement cost oh yeah we didn't have that one to advance to feudal age we actually have to pay 400 food 200 gold to advance to Castle Age, 1,200 food, 600 gold. So always double. And 2,400, 1,200 food and gold to advance to Imperial Age later on. Also, we have gates now to be seen here. And then I actually got everything from my list. Gates work only for the player that built the gate. So you can go in and out as much as you want. The opponent cannot unless they're actually... No, they can't. At least with Palisade Walls. Now you saw the problem a bit. Army not really fighting. As you can see, really minimal vision here. Simply because no one has a scout around. No towers finished. And now we can only see the army here. For example, Wham. Can't see those archers. Only can see them after they attacked. Big problem here with the Stealth Forest. As we mentioned earlier. 
Now, some micro shenanigans. That's obviously something that the casters will lead you through. Some counter attacks here. And now, we, as you can see, income per minute, wham, 215 gold. Normally, it's 200. Should have like one villager on gold. Indeed, a villager in general collecting 40 resources per minute. That's roughly the ballpark. So, a sacred site. A normal sacred site, as good as two and a half villagers on gold. The one from Delhi, as good as five villagers on gold. Relics, also giving you 100 gold per minute, except if we are HRE. But we will talk about those another time. Now, army is getting grouped up. Both players playing relatively heavy on Feudal Age. But as we mentioned, Royal Knights. Pretty crazy good unit here, so always nice. Plus, there's also a French upgrade called Chivalry. That actually allows those knights to heal if they're out of combat. Now we can see the typical micro, right? Someone with rock scissor against the other one with paper scissor. Does that even work? Yeah, maybe. Well, you, you know. You know how it works, right? And also mechanic for those scholars here. You can not only put them in moss to get researched quicker up to three you can also put them into mil military buildings to increase researches and the production speed quite a bit as well i think it's even double the speed so plus 100 percent if you put a scholar in there and suddenly those archers are just flying in or seven seconds to 15 yeah yeah yeah. so 100 faster now the next engagement palisade walls 1500 hp so pretty damn good arrows now coming in spearmen as you can see now they go for their brace mechanic and scared those knights away. Tower still around doing some damage. So Wham can't stay there for too much longer. More and more blacksmith upgrades. You kind of want to constantly focus that. Now goes on to some stone here. The Delhi player mainly for some towers. Always want to see Delhi and Abyssal players expand to go for berries. Here still quite fast. And now we go for more and more wood control. Still sacred side, nice control here. Left hand side blocked with that outpost. Right hand side not really contested at all. Now breaking in here and we see Spearman a bit at the front. Not the prettiest scenario. Tough to micro obviously the gate still pretty tight. Knights at the front. Now Spearman have to go at the front. And everything bugs out a bit due to that choke point here. And as you can see, a bit easier to micro for the French player. Maybe opening those gates could have been an option. And quite some army dwindling. So maybe not the best choice for Wham to try to contest that in this position. Tower is still helping out from distance as well. Quite some reasonable range on those. And as you can see, now the sacred side here is getting neutralized. And once we get to the bottom, Wham will be losing his gold income. Don't get confused here. Basically... Age of Empires calculates, okay, how much gold did you get in the last minute? So this one won't, like, okay, you lose the sacred side, instantly drop to zero. It will drop to zero after one minute. Knight's still around. Now losing some of their lives. Maybe a bit of a mis misstep here by Marine Lord, over committing quite a bit. We'll lose the scouts, we'll lose the knight. And scouts now going back, but still Archer's doing a really good job. And now that 200 will drop quite a bit. We don't have any villages on gold. One archer range, one barracks here. And we're floating quite some resources. And now we can see 12 food. Or 1200 food, 600 gold. So we can build a next landmark. We have the choice of two landmarks if you're Delhi. One of them allows you to get two different upgrades. As you can see, that's the one we are going for. Strongest upgrade there is plus three attack for at arms and lancers. Other upgrades are more pop space for your houses. And we can look into those a bit later. If the House of Learning actually finished. The other one is that infantry can not only build palisade walls on the field, but also stone walls. And they can build stone towers. So something we can see if the opponent or, or like the Delhi player already went on to quite a lot of stone. Now the House of Learning could be cancelled here and could just be rebuilt. Indeed, that's what's happening. And as you can see, now tries to rebuild the landmark over here. And lots of lots of villager losses uh, or losses here. Military is something I would think, indeed, that is the main story why the game is going so bad here. 2 to 1 KD. 
I think the engagements here were pretty bad. And as you can see, 22 villagers building this landmark at a very reasonable pace. But so much going down here. And I don't think we really need to cast the game to the end. So that was it. French against Delhi. You get the understanding. House of Learning will allow us some upgrades. We can show you the upgrades there to get a good idea as well. And we can also go for... Plus one health for all the mosques and side range for outposts. Yeah. Anything else I have my, on my to-do list? Relics. We'll put that on HRE. We explained gates. We played sacred sites and advanced to the next age. Yeah. If you have any questions about French or Delhi or Age of Empires 4 in general, post them down below. This was it from this explanation video. Goodbye. Hey, lovers.